Ahoy there, Chris Fish here, and today I am going on a cruise to Bermuda, and I'm taking you with me. Now, this is the first time I've ever been to Bermuda, so it should be a lot of fun. I have no clue what to expect, and if you can't tell by the sirens and street noise, we are leaving from New York City, and that massive ship right there, that is the Disney dream that we'll be going on. All right, guys, so I have some bad news already. Unfortunately, they confiscated my fishing gear when I was going through security. Apparently, it's not allowed on the boat, so we're gonna have to come up with a plan for catching fish without fishing gear. But either way, let's get on this ship and let me show you what a cruise is like. Now, one of the things that might come up in your mind, especially if you haven't been on boats before, is how safe is it? Like, are you gonna sink? What do you do if you sink? Well, they're testing the lifeboats right now, right in front of us, and safety is taken very seriously. And I'm gonna go out on the deck to see if we could catch this boat getting lifted up on the ship. I wanna see what it looks like. And check it out. This is how they raise and lower these massive lifeboats. I didn't realize how big these things are. And this is actually a lot slower than I expected. I thought this would go quicker, but I guess if you're sinking on a boat like this, you're probably not gonna sink quickly. But hopefully we don't have to find out. And I just thought this was pretty cool. All right, with that horn blast, we are officially off to Bermuda. Check it out, in the distance you can see we are approaching the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, which, fun fact, is 228 feet high off the water. I had to look that up. And our cruise ship, the Dream, is 217 feet high, so we're gonna be 11 feet from the bridge. Oh man, look at this. We are so close. Now I know we're not gonna hit, but it totally looks like we're about to hit. And that right there is the tallest point on the boat, so we're clear. But wow, that's insane. We just made it. Another thing that's pretty cool is as we travel down the Hudson, the Coast Guard is on both sides of the boat providing a security detail, and they're not messing around. They have the guns out and ready at the bow. Normally you don't see that unless if they're practicing. So this is the real deal. And it's pretty cool to get a security escort out to the ocean. And right now there's not much more to see. We're just heading offshore. So let's head to our cabin and let me show you what it looks like. All right, so this is my room. They have a couple different types. This is definitely one of the nicer ones. We have the head right here, and right next to it is a separate shower, which is actually really nice. So if somebody has to take a shower, somebody else could still use the bathroom. And then this is the rest of the cabin. We have a pretty big bed. And then going back here, we have a couch that turns into a bed, and here's the TV and the desk area. And then we have my favorite part of this entire room, the balcony. Check this out. You could just sit out here for hours enjoying the view, relaxing. The sound of the ocean is just amazing. But right now we have our first entertainment thing we want to do, and that is bingo. So let's go head down to bingo. Now, I've only been on one other cruise, but what I've noticed is there's always a party going on. Bingo! Hello, Corey. Why, hello there, Jess. Corey, do you see and dirty tree on that card? And dirty tree is on the card. It is on the card. Let's see if it goes green on the screen. No! That is one good claim of bingo. Oh Friend, I'm happy to tell you that you are taking back $665. Very cool. There's $665 going on with you, my dear. So here's we won something. Hey, beautiful to win it. Okay, back from bingo, $665 richer, and check this out. It's almost dinner time, it's been about five or six hours, and we're already past the Hudson Canyon. This boat is quick, it goes 22 knots, which is about 25 miles an hour. And at that speed, it's burning like 1,400 gallons an hour of fuel, which is crazy. All right, so we have a set time for dinner, that way we don't have to wait for a table. And every night's a new restaurant with a new theme and different food, so at least it doesn't get boring. Tonight we're eating at Animator's Palette, now after you order, every restaurant has their own entertainment until the food arrives. And if you get a good waiter or waitress, they teach you something cool like this. Okay, get the full towel. We're gonna fold it in half. And then we're gonna fold it in half again. And then you're gonna make a paper airplane. And then you're gonna make another paper airplane. Fold it over. Now you want this facing you, like the opening facing you. Bring that up and tuck this in. I'm a mile away from a road, okay. and I have a backpack on my back, and I have two, two. socks, one 
So dinner on a cruise is a three course meal every night. They start out with the appetizer and since I'm a growing boy, I got the salmon tartare and I asked if I could get a second appetizer and I was able to so I got the black truffle ravioli. Both were amazing. And then for dinner I got the grilled tuna which was also really good. And I'll put up the dinner menu on the screen that way if you want to pause it to see what they have you could do that. And then finally for dessert we had a few different sweet treats and as you could tell you could get very fat on a cruise but man oh man is it so good. Okay, so dinner is over and it is pirate night. And there goes Mickey. So before we go to bed, there's supposed to be a fireworks show and I think Disney's the only cruise that does fireworks on the water. Let me flip the camera around because I fit right in tonight. Well, folks, I promised you a party. So, here's a party in the sky. Whoa. All right, and just like that, the party's over and it is bedtime. When you get back to the room, they have it all set up for sleeping, give you some chocolates, there's a rat or maybe a mouse or whatever they made right here. And right back here, where it's sectioned off, that's where I'm sleeping tonight, and I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning! It's a little after 7 a.m. and we are just arriving to Bermuda. Now, I'm not a morning person, but it's totally worth getting up early because look at this. There is no one up. I've seen like one other person. I have the whole boat to myself. And hopefully that means my favorite view on the boat has no people. Oh man, just look at it. I love it. Look at that view. So we finally made it to the channel you can see Bermuda on the horizon. Now this boat has a 27 foot draft so that means there has to be more than 27 feet of water under the boat or it'll hit the bottom. And if you look over to the starboard side you can see that red channel marker right there and it's no more than 10 feet deep right there. And the same thing on the port side you can see the shallow reef and look at how close we are. And check it out, after that beautiful docking job, we have arrived in Bermuda. So let's go grab some breakfast and then head out and explore. And here is breakfast on a cruise ship. Look at that, donuts! Yes! Those look like they're jelly filled. Then you got your classic eggs and bacon. Pancakes, waffles. So I went with the Eggs Benedict hash brown. We have our Mickey Mouse waffle, cinnamon bun, and then a uh, strawberry and mango smoothie. That is my breakfast of champions. And just like that, breakfast is done. Let's go head out to Bermuda. So to get off the boat, we have this gangway here that you walk on, and now I'm officially a landlubber. So we have made it to Bermuda and now it's time to explore and I really want to see those world renowned pink sand beaches that Bermuda is known for. So we're right there. We need to go here and all the way down to right there, Horseshoe Bay. So we need to see if we could rent a car or a scooter so we could get around the island. So we jumped on this tram and this will take us to a nearby town so hopefully we could get a rental. And anytime you go to an island, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting a scooter. I did it in the Bahamas, it was awesome. Don't go on the tours, don't go on the buses, don't rent the electric cars. The electric cars have like one and a half hours of battery and uh, you have to charge it for three hours. The regular scooter is the way to go. So this is the gas scooter, very simple. This is in kilometers per hour. Apparently the island has a 35 kilometer per hour speed limit max for the whole island. So I'll put this to the run position so you guys can see. And it's very simple. You got your turn signals here, the horn. Uh, let's start her up is really easy. All you have to do is you have to actually hold the brake on the other side. It won't start unless if I hold this brake, but that's all you do. You press the starter and it starts up and then kickstand. This is probably, oh, there's a kickstart too. So if you want, you could, uh, if your battery's dead or if it's flooded or something, you just do that. Actually, I could probably start it up like this. There we go. And she starts right up. 
and it's automatic you give her gas and there's a clutch in there that'll grab and what else I think that's really it let's go for a ride okay here we go and you can see my dad is up there waiting for me and my mom is on the back of my scooter so let's head to Horseshoe Bay And we made it to Horseshoe Bay. When you hear about Bermuda, this is the beach that you hear about. This is the hot spot. This is what's in all the pictures. It's a protected pink sand beach. And I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but it doesn't look like pink sand to me. I can see a few pink specks, but I don't know. I was expecting something a little bit different and I'm kind of disappointed. But either way, it's a nice beach. I'm not saying it's not nice, it's pretty nice. But I want to see some pink sand, so let's head north and try to find a beach that's less touristy. Now this is more like it. There are no tourists here. Okay, this is Warwick Long Beach, which is Bermuda's longest beach. Well, actually, this is a forest to get to the beach, hopefully. The beach should be right on the other side of this. And let's take a peek right over here. All right, now look at that. You can see the beach. So we just have to get down this big cliff. And I guess this cliff here keeps most of the tourists away. And I probably shouldn't speak because I'm technically a shoe right now. There we go, almost there all right and we made it and check it out it's not bright pink like I was expecting but we actually have pink sand and these pink pieces are created by something called a red foraminifera which is this tiny organism that makes an exoskeleton out of calcium and it has a red or pink tint and I mean just sit back real quick and take a look at how beautiful this place is man I could get used to this now, I want to get a souvenir, but I don't have any bottles or anything, but there's a ton of trash all over the beach. And that should work. And I'm only taking a small bottle full of sand, just a couple of ounces, because I don't want to take away from the habitat or away from the beach. And they do sell this at the tourist shops, so there you go. I think it's more memorable to get it myself, and also, we're recycling. Next up, we scooted to the north side of the island just to explore some more and take in the scenery, which as you can tell, is absolutely gorgeous. All right, so this is just a little park we stopped at and take a look at this view. Now this is the north side of the island, so there's not many beaches on this side, there's more cliffs, and as you can tell, this side is definitely a lot wavier. And you can see way out there, that's our cruise ship, and that's where we're gonna have to start heading back towards. Now one thing you want to do before you return the scooters is fill up the fuel tank so you don't get charged a huge fee. And gas prices on the island are $1.88 per liter for diesel and $2.09 per liter for gasoline. And there's just under four liters in a gallon. So that's like seven to eight dollars per gallon. So I went to a convenience store and just so you get an idea of the island's life pricing. Arizona IT, iced tea, which is a buck in the United States, is three fifty-five here, and a dollar here is the same as a dollar in uh, the United States, so they're equivalent. Now, real quick, I wanted to voice over because later on I learned that Bermuda has a big problem with diabetes, and diabetes stems from too much sugar intake. So the government put a 75% tax on all high sugar products, and this increased the cost of drinks and other sugary foods substantially. So it ends up being that the increase in cost on these drinks is really because of the tax more than the remoteness of the island. And check it out, Bermuda sand. Okay, my bad. And real quick, look at this, $5 for this bottle of sand, but mine is so much cooler. It's more pink. We got it ourselves and we recycled the bottle from the beach too. Not bad. And just like that, we are back near the port because I have a fishing trip very soon. And I will say it again, definitely get scooters if you go to Bermuda. 
Yeah. All right. That was great. That was. And would you look at this. If I would have known that you could have rented a mini Hummer, I might have given this a go. Look at this thing. And I guess Hummer licensed the name out because this has the trademark grill and it says Hummer on it. And I wonder if it's a 4x4. Four four. Nope, no axles in the front, so it's probably rear-wheel drive, but still pretty cool. And check out the interior. It's pretty bare bones, but I mean, it's Hummer, so... And under the rear, we have a solid rear axle, and you can see the electric motor right in front of it. And that's actually pretty cool. So maybe next time I'll have to try out an electric Hummer. It looks like the top comes off, and it looks like it could be a lot of fun. Now, since I couldn't bring my fishing tackle on this trip, I signed up for a fishing trip that leaves at 6.30, so I need to get my ticket and grab a quick bite to eat. All right, got my ticket to go fishing at the port. I'm gonna go grab a hot dog or something before we head out, or before I head out. You guys are coming along with me, so basically before we head out, I'm grabbing a hot dog, but you're probably also wishing that you were here, right? Yo, and up. And all you have to do is walk up and all the food is included. I'm not gonna say free, cause a cruise is not cheap. Included food, you get anytime you want, 24 hours a day, and then you go sit down and eat. Before and after. Okay, all fueled up, so let's head to the party boat. And there she is, the Jolly Roger. How you doing? First you come aboard. Thank you. Make yourselves a high Am I able to follow you up? Okay. So this is a four-hour night fishing trip aboard the 56-foot Jolly Roger. The crew consists of a captain and one mate, and both of these guys were really friendly. And luckily this trip wasn't even close to capacity. We only had like seven or eight people on the boat. But this is your classic tourist fishing excursion. It isn't very serious, but let's see what fishes we could catch in Bermuda at night. The bait they gave us consisted of cut squid and whole bait fish, and we traveled about 30 minutes to fish the reef right outside of the port. Okay, so let's see if we can catch some fish. The setup for today is a three ounce sinker tied to the bottom here. Good, and now right above the weight we have what looks to be a size 1-0 hook. And we're gonna start with some squid, but we also have whole bait fish we could try as well. Good, and with the squid on the hook, let's drop her down and see if we can catch a fish in Bermuda. And I wonder what bites at night on the reef. Now the strong Bermuda wind really ruined the audio, so to hear me clearly, I'm gonna voice over what's going on. To start, I kept getting my squid stolen by fish who were very successful at avoiding the hooks. And then finally, after about 15 minutes of frustration and getting my bait stolen, I had a good hook set. There we go, fish on. First one. There you go, right species. So this is called a lane snapper, and apparently it is very good eating. This is considered a small one for this species, but I did it. I caught my first fish in Bermuda, and my first lane snapper. And this fish went back in to live another day. At this point, not only did I want to catch a bigger fish, but I also wanted to try to catch different species to knock off species from my list. All right, getting closer, right? And I know it's hard to tell with this light, but the colors on this fish are awesome with the yellow, the red on the tips of the fins, and the pure bright white scales. Now this next fish was painful. This was a monster fish I hooked into, and watch what happens. You can see I reel quickly to get him off the reef, which is perfect, but he's pulling drag out. And after I reeled it in, I realized the hook didn't break, the line didn't break, it just came out of his mouth. I originally thought the line snapped, but that's why they call it fishing and not catching. And to make things worse, the captain and the mate said they thought it was a grouper, and that's a fish I really want to catch so badly. So that one hurt to lose. So after missing that monster fish, I pulled up a couple more fish, like this lane snapper. And then this blue striped grunt, which is a new species for me, but he was pretty small. Okay, so we just pulled up anchor, heading out to a new reef because we stopped getting bites. 
I'll tell you one thing, you can't see it. Oh, there's a star. I don't think you'll be able to see it, but the Milky Way out there is insane. You can see it so clearly. It's nothing like the Northeast or Jersey or even upstate New York. It's so cool out here. Let's get to the new spot and try to catch some more fish. The captain actually invited me upstairs to take a look at the fish finder, and he was showing me where the reef was and where we're anchoring up. And you can see right there is the reef and there's some fish on it, so we knew we were in a good spot. And at the second spot, right away, I was on a bigger fish. And you can actually hear it in the background, the whole boat got excited when I pulled this fish over the rails. And this is a big fish. This is a blue striped grunt, and check out those chompers. And I was told this was a very large grunt for Bermuda. And just for comparison, here's another blue striped grunt I ended up catching. And you can see, this is what they normally catch, so the other one was a monster. And to catch all these fish, I was using a little trick I came up with, which the crew called the Jersey Special. That's what we're calling the, uh, the Jersey Special here. Piece of squid and a minnow, and it's killing them doing better than just the squid and if you have only the minnow it comes yeah, off really easily look at that even out of the water the fish are going after like Bert and Ernie, it they're flying in the boat <laughs> so after an action-packed night of fishing we got the 10 minute warning I always hate that but I finished up catching this lane snapper here and I had one last bite and I reeled in the last fish of the night now I might have caught the most fish but I didn't catch the biggest let me show you all right so here's our catch Probably biggest fish, right? Biggest fish right there. You caught that? What's your name? Lizzie. Lizzie? Nice job, Lizzie. We got some snapper. Everybody caught a bunch of snapper. We got this giant grunt. Look at that. Pretty cool. A bunch of snapper in here. Nice small uh, crew today of uh, seven, eight people. Yeah, toss that guy in there. Nice job. So after a few hours of fishing, we picked up anchor and headed back to dock. And I gotta say, this trip was a lot of fun, the captain and crew were great, and if you're in Bermuda and have a few hours to spare, I would definitely recommend doing this fishing trip. Nice to meet you, Buck. Very, very nice to meet you, thanks a lot for getting us on the fish. Alright, have a good evening, guys. Have a good one. You too, man. Well, that's it. We are leaving Bermuda and heading back to New York City. One last cool thing that I want to show you guys is the pilot boat picking up the pilot from the ship as it's moving. The job of the pilot is to help the captain of the ship safely enter, and in this case, leave the harbor, since he knows the harbor better than anybody else. He knows where the shallow water is, he knows where there might be rocks or sandbars or other hazards, but once the ship's out of the harbor, that pilot has to get back to shore, so the pilot boat actually picks him up. And you can see him getting off right there as the boat is moving. And this is super dangerous. And although it might look simple, watch the pilot boat move away from the cruise ship without getting sucked into the ship. That is not an easy maneuver, and he didn't hit the ship at all. So my first time in Bermuda was amazing, and if you haven't been, this is my favorite island I've been to so far. I felt safe the whole time, the views were spectacular, and it's just a beautiful place. So I hope I was able to give you guys a little taste of what it's like to go on a cruise to Bermuda. If you enjoyed the video, remember to give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you guys thought of the video. This is my first time doing something like this. I want to know if you found certain parts more interesting or certain parts more boring that will help me with the next video like this. And if you're not a subscriber, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button for more fishing and boating videos.